Substances that contain only hydrogen and carbon atoms are called hydrocarbons. We have two classes of hydrocarbons. They are aliphatic hydrocarbons and aromatic hydrocarbons. Aliphatic hydrocarbons are composed of acyclic and cyclic carbon atoms. That is, the carbon atoms are arranged in straight or branch chains or they are arranged in form of a ring. In aromatic hydrocarbons, the carbon atoms are only arranged in a cyclic form. Examples of aliphatic hydrocarbons are alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Examples of aromatic hydrocarbons are carbon atoms arranged in form of a ring, e.g. the benzene ring. Alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons, that is, they compose they are composed of carbon atoms with single bonds, e.g. methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, decane. Methane is the first member of the alkane series. Being the first member, this formula is applied to get the molecular formula for methane, and that is C1, H2 into bracket 1 plus 2. And that is C1 H2 plus 2. That gives us CH4. CH4 will be the formula for methane being the first member of the alkane series. The second member of this series is ethane. Being the second member, we are applying this same formula. We have C2 H2. 2 into bracket 2 plus 2. That gives us C2 H4 plus 2. That is C2 H6. Ethane has the molecular formula C2 H6 being the second member of the alkane series. This formula can be applied all through because it is the general molecular formula for all alkanes. The third member is propane. Propane will have C3 H2 into bracket 3 plus 2. That will give us C3 H6 plus 2. C3 H8. C3 H8 will be the molecular formula for propane. You can keep applying this even onto the 10th, 12th, 20th alkane. E.g., if we apply it to decane, decane is the 10th member of this series. It becomes C10 H. 2 into bracket 10 plus 2. That gives us C10 H 20 plus 2. And that is C10 H 22. If we keep applying this formula, we keep getting the general formula or the specific formulas for all members of the alkane series. Now, how do we draw the structures for alkanes? The first or the simplest alkane is methane. And that you have one carbon atom. The carbon atom has a valency of four. So we're going to put four bonds around this single carbon atom and bring in our hydrogen atoms around the carbon atom. This is CH4. The first member of the alkane series, methane, is CH4. Alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons. That means they contain only single bonds. Ethane, being the second member, contains two carbon atoms. The two carbon atoms can be written out as this. Now, the carbon atom has a valency of four. So this can take three more bonds because the bond around the carbon atom should not exceed four. This also should take three more bonds. And these bonds are filled up using hydrogen atoms. Remember, we are dealing with hydrocarbons. They are substances consisting of only hydrogen and carbon atoms. Our last example is propane from this alkane series. Propane is the third member, so it should contain three carbon atoms. Taking note that each carbon atom can take four bonds, we'll put three more to, to make this four on the first carbon atom. The second carbon atom has two bonds already, so let's bring in two more bonds to make it four. The last carbon has one bond, so bring in three more bonds to make it four. 
each carbon atom should have four bonds around it. That is the valency of carbon, and that signifies the amount of bonds that carbon can take. So this is propane, it is C3H8. The structure for propane is given as this. Now let's move to the alkene series. Alkenes are unsaturated hydrocarbons. These are the first 10 members of the alkene series. Ethene, propene, butene, pentene, hexene, heptene, octene, nonene, and decane. The general formula for all alkenes is CnH2n. Alkenes must have the presence of a double bond, at least a single double bond. Therefore, the first alkene should have two carbon atoms because there can be no double bond between carbon and hydrogen. So two carbon atoms makes the first alkene and that is ethene. So carbon can take four bonds. I can bring in two extra bonds to this carbon to make it four. This other carbon can also take four bonds. I bring in two more to make it four. Okay, fill these bonds with hydrogen atoms. I have the first member, which is ethene. Ethene can also be drawn as this. Sometimes it is good to space out the hydrogen atoms around the carbon atoms. This is C2H4, the first member of the alkene series known as ethene. The second member of the alkene series is propene. Now, since the first member, first member has two carbon atoms, that means the second member of this series will have three carbon atoms and the presence of a single double bond. The double bond should come on the first carbon atom. Now, this carbon has two bonds already, so it should have two more bonds to make it four bonds around each carbon atom. This carbon atom has three bonds around it. So one last bond to make it four. The last carbon here has just one bond, so I can bring in three extra bonds. Now, I should fill the bonds with carbon atoms. This gives me the structure of propene. Now, this is C3H6. One, two, three, four, five, six, carbon at six hydrogen atoms around three carbon atoms. The final example of alkenes we'll look at is butene. Butene also should have a single double bond because it's a simple alkene. Now, that means it has four carbon atoms with the double bond being on the first carbon and hydrogen atoms across these carbon atoms. The first carbon has two bonds already. If it takes two more, it becomes four. The second carbon has three bonds. With one bond, it makes four. Remember, each carbon atom should have four bonds across it. Now, this is C4H8. The third member of the alkene series, butene, is C4H8. Moving on now to the alkyne series. The alkynes are also unsaturated because they have a triple bond. A single triple bond makes up members of the alkyne series. The first member is ethyne. Next, propyne, butyne, pentyne, hexyne, heptyne, octyne, nonyne, and decyne. Ethyne, being the first member of the alkyne series, must possess two carbon atoms because of the triple bond present in the alkyne series. It must be a triple bond. Therefore, Two carbon atoms makes up the first member of the alkyne series known as ethyne. Now the carbon can take four bonds, so I can bring in one last bond across those carbon atoms. So I have C2H2. Ethyne is C2H2. I can get this from the general formula of the alkyne series, CnH2n minus two. Being the first member of this series, I get that but because there, there should be a triple bond in ethyne or the alkyne series, there must be two carbon atoms. So C2H, C2H, C2H2, 
C2H2. C2H2. That gives us ethane. The second member of this series is propyne. Now, the first member of the series has two carbon atoms. Therefore, the second member will have three carbon atoms with the presence of a single triple bond. Now, this carbon atom has three bonds, so it should take one last bond. The middle carbon has four bonds already, three and one, that's four. So this carbon atom is full. The last carbon atom should take three extra bonds to make it four carbon atoms around that. Now, this is C3H4. We can get that also from the general formula. General formula is CnH2n minus two. Now, this is the third substance, C3, H2 into 3 minus 2. Remember, alkynes, first member is ethyne, and that has two carbon atoms. So propyne should have three carbon atoms. That is C3, H2 into 3 minus 2. So that gives us C3, H6 minus 2, which is C3, H4. So propyne is C3, H4. Now, butyne, being the third member of the alkyne series, has four carbon atoms. Remember, the first member has two carbon atoms, the second member, three carbon atoms, and the fourth member has four carbon atoms. And there must be the presence of a single triple bond to make this butyne. So we have two, three, four. Four carbon atoms, the first carbon has three bonds, so I can bring in one last bond to make it four. The second carbon here has three and one bond, which is four. This carbon atom cannot take any more bonds. This has two bonds, so I can bring in two more to make it four. The last carbon has just one bond. I make it four bonds by bringing in three extra bonds. So if I fill this up with hydrogen atoms, I get C4H6. C4H6. I can calculate that from here. I can get C4H2 into bracket four minus two. So that is C4 H6. Butyne is C4 H6. Now, aromatic hydrocarbon is simply benzene. Benzene has a formula C6 H6. So aromatic hydrocarbon is simply benzene. We can draw this structure by bringing in six carbon atoms to form an hexagon. Six carbon atoms forming an hexagon. We combine these together, we will get the structure for benzene, C6H6. Now, six carbon atoms across this. So let's bring in one hydrogen, one hydrogen, one hydrogen, we need six hydrogen atoms because it's C6H6, but the carbon should take four bonds. Okay, this carbon has one, two, three. This carbon has one, two, three. There are three carbon atoms on each of those, or three bonds on each of those carbon atoms. So you need to have four bonds on a carbon. So this should have a double bond. This carbon atom, therefore, has one, two, three, four bonds. Very good. This carbon can also take two bonds to make it four. This will also take two bonds to make it four. Now, the carbon atom here has one, two, three, four bonds. This carbon atom is full. The carbon atom here has one, two, three, four bonds. It is okay. Carbon atom here has one, two, three, four bonds. Very good. The carbon atom here has one, two, three, four bonds. This is the structure of benzene. Another way to draw the benzene structure is drawing a regular hexagon, regular hexagon, and showing that there is movement of electrons at that middle of the hexagon. Now, this is another way of drawing the benzene structure. Regular hexagon with the double bonds always rotating or moving, indicated by this circle showing a continuous movement of the double bonds in the benzene structure. 